I'm Anastasia Hipkins, the co-host of today's summer festival events brought to you by the San Diego Writers Festival in partnership with the Coronado Public Library, Warwick's, and the San Diego Memoir Writers Association. Um, and I'm here with Marnie Friedman, who was the co-founder of the festival and also the co-founder of the San Diego Memoir Writers Association. Hello, everybody. If you're just joining us, uh, we want to do a little shout out to um, Feeding San Diego. Uh, you may not know this, but during our current crisis, Feeding San Diego has hosted over 1,129 distributions, including youth meals and emergency distributions across San Diego County. And if you make a donation, 100% of it goes to Feeding San Diego, um, getting to the food to people in need. So. Uh, we don't keep any of it, it goes straight to them. So you'll find that link in the comments section. That's just one another example of um, bringing community together. And, um, and so our next um, yeah. event is sponsored by the Coronado Cultural Arts Commission. Really, really wonderful organization whose mission is to serve and partner with Coronado's many local artists and cultural arts organizations, act as a catalyst in further developing a vibrant and cohesive arts community. And I can honestly say working with them, they live and breathe by that uh, motto and it, it, they're incredibly supportive. So in this event, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be showing a short film um, titled Isabel. And then we're going to come back afterwards to have a conversation with the writer, Cheryl Sonstein, and the director, Jonathan Hammond. Um, this film is actually a perfect example of how some of our local arts organizations are working together. Um, in this case, the two organizations are So Say We All, which is a literary nonprofit dedicated to the art of storytelling, and the Film Consortium San Diego's FilmCon Challenge, which is a timed international competition that encourages filmmakers to make films on specific topics, including or with different communities. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more after. Um, but first, we'd just like to introduce the author of the short story that inspired Isabel, writer Cheryl Sonstein. Is it Sonstein or Sonstein? We have to unmute. Sonstein. Sunstein. Thank you. Sorry about so, that. Uh, Cheryl Sunstein is originally from Ambler, Pennsylvania. She now resides in San Diego, where she's happy to take part in many wonderful writing and storytelling opportunities offered through So Say We All, San Diego Writers, Inc., Thursday Writers, Dime Stories, and The Butterfly. The film, Isabel, that you're going to see in just a few minutes is based on her short story about being a caregiver, and it won the San Diego True Film Con Challenge three San Diego Film Awards, and an Emmy nomination. And the person that adapted Cheryl's story into that award-winning film is the filmmaker, Jonathan Hammond. Hey, Jonathan. Hi, Anastasia, how are you? Good. Good. So Jonathan is a director, editor, and writer of a dozen short films. He has accrued several accolades, including an Emmy nomination, a San Diego Film Award, two consecutive San Diego Film Con Challenge wins, three San Diego 48-Hour Film Project Awards, and two consecutive KPBS Explorer Awards. He was the winner of Best Writing for 2016 at the San Diego International Fringe Festival, and he was shortlisted for a Grammy Award for Best Music Video. Jonathan is a teaching artist and producer with So Say We All, as well as a founding member of The Whole Alphabet, So Say We All's LGBTQ plus branch. Jonathan attended the University of Illinois and NYU Tisch School of the Arts before moving to San Diego. Now, on a personal note, I first became involved with So Say We All about six years ago in one of these community things. So Marnie had met the founder of So Say We All, Justin Hudnell, and then Marnie told me, you should try submitting a story. And so I did. And my second story, actually, Jonathan was one of the people who volunteered to be a performance coach. So I met Jonathan at Lestat's on Park. I don't know if you remember this, Jonathan. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it was a story about my mom and Alzheimer's disease and... I was really nervous and Jonathan gave me a bunch of advice. Um, two things I distinctly remember, which I'm really bad at, but I do remember them. One was stand with both feet firmly on the ground and about a foot apart so that you feel really balanced. Mm -hmm. And the other was speak slower than you think you should. <laughs> and I was writing all the advice down and then we went through it once in the list dots and then he said, come with me. And he took me outside and he said, I want you to read the story here. 
and he's oh, wow. sat down and I'm standing on the sidewalk and people are walking around me and I'm thinking, I can't do this, but I did. And afterwards, and I will never forget this, Jonathan said to me, if you can do that here, you can do it anywhere. And it was just, it was such a positive message and every interaction I've had with him has been that way. Um, you can do it. So, uh, Jonathan created the film you're about to see as part of the True San Diego, a film con challenge from 2017. It was dedicated to telling stories of real people and real lives here in San Diego. Filmmakers chose a true short story, adapted it into a screenplay, found the actors, and then shot and edited the film all within 60 days. This, adapt, this story, adapted from Cheryl's short story, When I'm 88, this is Isabel. So it appears you have no experience caregiving or working with the elderly. No. You're hired. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah, as long as you pass the background check. Oh, okay. You've never accidentally killed an old person, have you? No. Intentionally? No. <laughs> then we're good to go. Seriously? I need staff, man. I like you. You've got spunk. Here at Compassion Keepers, we call our staff angels because that's what they are to the sick and the elderly. They get to live in their own homes independently and that gives them a sense of integrity. Each assignment is different and presents its own unique set of challenges. After just one thank you, you get your own set of wings. Right, Enrique? I think it's best to start you off easy, man. I have Isabel. She's an impressive, highly accomplished woman who does most everything on her own. And it appears she also lives in relative proximity to you. I also have Arthur. What do you think? Well, is Arthur also impressive and lives in close proximity to me? No. He lives in Oceanside. And he's very belligerent. And also morbidly obese. And you'd have to transport him to the doctor at least three times a week. Also, he hates women. So, Arthur? I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that to you right away. Isabel has early onset dementia and severe anxiety, but other than that, she's a hoot. Her son, who has guardianship, would want to request a preliminary meeting. Okay, great. Hi. Oh, hi. Uh, you must be Taryn? Taryn Lee, yes. Hi. hi. So nice to meet <laughs> you. Nice to meet you. Look at her. I am, Mother. What is she, a homeless? She looks rather nice, Mother. Oh, uh, why is she wearing that? It looks like a homeless. It's her uniform, Mother. It's just my uniform. I, I, is, it, is that fabric synthetic? What does it matter, Mother? Be because she is probably flammable, like my son. I Mother? Terry no, Lee McKenzie. No, no. I bet she likes jalapeno bagels, Bradford. I don't like jalapeno. You, you will oh. not enter my home, you unclean reprobate. I, I have no firm opinion it's on bagels. You, it's not you. Routine and familiarity are really her only points of comfort. Oh, of course. It's really nice to meet you. Oh, Excuse you. Me. Oh, my well. God, mother. Okay. Hello? So, I hear the meeting went well. You must have really impressed them. I did? Yeah, they want you to start first thing in the morning. They do? I don't know, Sybil. She screamed at me and called me a reprobate. Oh, that's awful. What does that mean? I don't know, but it doesn't sound very nice. Would you like me to Google it? I can Google it. No. What about that Arthur? Oh, I'm afraid he passed this morning. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I was kind of underselling that whole obese thing. Anyway, I will let you know if anything else comes along. There aren't any other new patients? None for any noobs at this time. You're just gonna have to be on standby. An angel waiting in the wings. That's an old joke, never gets old. <laughs> I'll take it. You know, if they want me, I'll take it. That's the spirit. And a few things about Isabel, the three most important things are routine, routine, routine. What's your name again? Uh, Taryn. Well, Taryn Lee. <laughs> That sounds made up. Well, it is. But I mean, isn't every name when you think about it? I mean, who came up with it? Isabel. It's biblical. 
Well, so whoever wrote that is probably... God. Let's go make me a bagel. 845 cinnamon raisin bagel with an exact tablespoon of I can't believe it's not butter. Nine, San Diego weather. Kelly Hale here. It's 72 degrees and sunny San Diego. Go play some volleyball. 10 a.m. San Diego weather. Kelly Hale here. It's 72 degrees and sunny San Diego. Go play some volleyball. 11 a.m. San Diego weather. Kelly Hale here. It's 72 degrees and sunny San Diego. Go play some volleyball. Noon, San Diego weather. Kelly Hale here. 72 degrees in sunny San Diego. Go play some volleyball. It doesn't give an exact time when I'm supposed to give you a bath. That's because you don't need to give me one. Well, it says specifically oh, that I'm supposed to sit on my Aunt Rose's quilt. Sorry. Don't touch it. She brought that back from France. Hey, my grandfather fought in Normandy. <laughs> you don't say? Yeah. Huh. I owe you my freedom. Well, I wouldn't say that. Me neither. Go make me a salad. It's four. 4 p.m., a dinner salad on a bed of spring lettuce, baby carrots, one avocado, and a dollop of olive oil. There are three pieces of turkey here. Why such frivolity with my meat? Who do you think I am, Oprah? I can just take a piece off. You will make me another salad. But if there's nothing else wrong with it, I'll just take it. You will make me another salad. It's five after four. I'm hungry. After dinner, she loosens up and likes to watch reruns of The Joker's Wild. The Joker's Wild? One can always find solace in watching dead people win refrigerators. What's your name again, dear? Taryn. Taryn Lee. Sounds made up. are going to go down if it's 55 degrees. You tell that to Al-Qaeda. I don't think that's right. We need new batteries. Did I ever tell you about my friend? No, you've never told me anything. The doctor said, we don't allow you to treat coloreds here. Oh, okay. She had two sons, but she did it anyway. They fired her, of course. I was so proud of her. Would be too. Most of them come here and watch television, read their magazines, text, ignore me. You're not the worst. Thank you, Isabel. That really means a lot. The Joker's Wild is on. Hello? Taryn, it's Sybil, your manager at Compassion Keepers. Hi, is everything all right? Unfortunately, no, you've been fired. What? 
I'm just kidding. They love you. Bradford, I bet she voted for Jimmy Carter. Mother, she's the reason you get to live here. I am not going through this again. Eric and I are- I, I'm not going to a home. Then I suggest you be nicer to your caregiver. I'm just calling to let you know that you are officially out of your probation slash training period, and you will be getting a $2 an hour raise on Monday. How do I look? Ravishing. I know. Isabel, can I help you? I don't know. Can you? Where are we, Florida? Yes. What? Nothing, he's fine. Uh, oh, oh, um, I will have the uh, Fonda salad with the salmon. Oh, unfortunately, we don't have the salmon today. What? Oh my God. Oh, it, but it, it, it's Wednesday. If it's a fancy night. I'm so sorry. Oh, how can they not have any salmon, Would Bradford? You like, you like else no, well? it's Wednesday. I want salmon. I'll have a scotch. No, we'll have the check. Hello? You look ravishing in my dress. I know. <laughs> I'm not supposed to have sweets. It's fancy night, Isabel. Now don't spill any on my dress. I know. Did I ever tell you about my friend? No. The first place he took me was to see the waves. There are no waves in France. There are no waves in Arkansas. But here, they are breathtaking. She was 26 when he died. He left her with two little boys. I was so mad at him. He brought her to San Diego. They had worked at Little Rock Mercy. He was a flirt. She ignored him, pretended to ignore him. Doctor shouldn't die young. <laughs> Sometimes she forgets his name. I hate that more than anything. I hate that. So she would go so she could remember that now is. Oh, what, what, what time is it? What time is it? Just look out in front of you, Isabel. You don't need the weather channel. David.
Karen. It's Sybil. Let me guess. I've been fired. Actually, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. Of course you haven't been fired. Technically, Isabel's son wants to put her in a home. Hi, Isabel. I got you some batteries. In case it gets cold. <laughs> I'll just leave them here. Do not sit on that. Sorry. They're moving me into a home. I know. I've been here 30 years. I know. I just came to tell you that Shh. I'm watching the Joker's Wild. It was really nice to know you, Isabel. Did I ever tell you about my friend? She took me to see the waves and you made me forget. I'm sorry, I just wanted no, you to... No, She made me forget what time it was. Tell her thank you for that. Think who? <laughs> Something made up. Taryn. Taryn Lee. beautiful um, film, um, the both of you, and I know um, there's a story behind it, um, you know, the, the creation of how this originally came to be. Oh, did we just lose Cheryl there, Cheryl? Um, and then I think one of the things that's really interesting about this um, story is about collaboration, and sometimes collaboration is difficult, sometimes it's it's uh, non-existent sometimes it's uh, all sorts of things and so um, let's start off with um, Cheryl tell us how this originated yes thank you so uh, we've been talking before about so say we all and they run a monthly uh, storytelling show called vamp which is an acronym I think for uh, visual audio monologue performance Hmm. like that and they have a theme every month and then they choose um, seven or eight stories and they work with uh, the author they get a writing coach and a performance coach and then it's performed you know at least uh, pre-covid era uh, at the whistle stop at the end of every month and the writer gets up and um, gets to tell the story and they have visual behind them visual aids and uh, way back now about four years ago already, uh, the theme one month was when I'm 64. And you could interpret that however you wanted, uh, aging, relationships, Beatles songs. Mm. So I submitted a story called When I'm 88, which became Isabel about my relationship with the woman I was taking care of. 
And um, it actually was not accepted into that van. And then shortly after that, I guess this is beginning of 2017, um, they did the first True Film Con Challenge and they were looking for uh, true stories from Associate We All writers. And I guess what happened is um, they weren't getting enough submissions. So I asked Jody, uh, Jody Silly at the um, Film Consortium if you know, it had to be accepted for vamp or it had to be just a true story. And I think at the time, because it was the first one, they weren't getting a lot of submissions. She's just said, um, yeah, you know, you can just send whatever true story you have. So, so um, I did. Did you consider yourself a writer at this point or this was new to you? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> uh, I don't know that I ever considered myself uh, a writer. I, I do a lot of, uh, true stories and a lot of uh, little open mics like dime stories, you know, it's, <laughs> I, I don't know what to call it, more, more a hobby, I guess. Mm. And then how did it get to Jonathan? How did, what happened then? Um, you probably have to ask him more about the specifics. I know with the FilmCon challenge, the way it worked was the team's had, uh, I think, 60 days to get a story and then transform it into a film. Um, I think, Jonathan, you're, you're given three, three stories to choose from, right? Right. Yeah, my understanding, what Jody told me was, if it was a written for vamp, it, it, you can submit it. Um, we had three, three stories, and it was really, I mean, it was, it was kind of a no-brainer when we wrote them. Which, well, no tell us a little bit about the True Con Challenge, or how did, uh, the Film Con right. Challenge, how does that work? Um, uh, yeah, well, thank you, first of all, for having us. Okay. Um, the, it's it's basically so um, thus far there's been there's been four they just finished the fourth one and um, everyone is a different uh, theme so the first one in, in Jody Silly um, who runs the film consortium San Diego her um, her her dream was to to have people make short movies based on um, the true so say we all stories. Mm -hmm. So as Cheryl said, you it's it's uh, last Thursday of the month and people got to tell their own true story. Um, and so people submitted um, and then you got, uh, you got to pick from three. If you didn't want one of the three, you can turn them in and get a wild card. And there were like just a few like prompts like ours was we had to have um, a like a long shot so that's what there's a scene in there where she's she talks like two minutes straight without cutting so mm -hmm. things like that um and then you had 60 days to write it film it edit it turn it in um wow and so the first one was true stories the second one was horror so um again sociable has a publication where they um have horror stories in their um in um these small books and journals and the third one was her con challenge so it was about um uh women's stories and it had to have a woman director mm. um and the fourth one was gi military stories so going um, back to to isabel um right. what drew you to that story what made you go i want to tell that story um the I think the thing about it was it was the scariest for me because it was um, we make these movies all the time, like these fun little movies, and I have a bunch of friends who are actors, so it's, I, I'm like I don't know anyone <laughs> who would like of, of that age range. But it was what was appealing to me was as actually the initial the initial we didn't have the the director of photography. Uh, we ended up having a different one, but the first one was like, you have to do that one because um, it's it's telling a story about women of a certain age and they never, they're never represented. And, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that's, that's the, if there's any argument, that's it. And then my producer, Carla, who also played the, um, the lady who runs the agency. She's great. Yeah, yeah, she's hilarious. But she, um, her, she was a caretaker for her, her dying mother, mm -hmm. um, so she felt a connection to it. And I was also a caretaker for my dying father. Uh, so well, it was, you know, something that I had a personal. We all had a personal connection to, you know. 
So let's talk a little bit about that, the concept of um, the caretaker. I think there's a number of people that are in this situation. Sometimes people have kids and they're caretaking. Um, what is it about, what, what I find when I'm um, reading a lot of the memoir stories is that uh, people really struggle with feeling alone. And then when they have seen um, this short film, uh, they see that, that they're, it, it's, a, it's a common experience that many people have. Um, <laughs> what did you guys want to say about caretaking or about memory loss or that kind of relationship that can happen? Um, I, I wasn't trying to say anything. I was I, about it. I mean, that wasn't really my objective or my goal. I, you, I, I sure I might have a different um, um, say on that. But what I will say is the response of people who are dealing with it has been like, I do not even think about it, but it's been, it's been overwhelming. I get, uh, I still get emails and people come up to me all the time talking about it, you know, and how much it, it, it means to them. Um, I wasn't really trying to make a commentary. I was just trying to be honest about mm -hmm. what I knew of it. Mm -hmm. And Shara, what, a, what about for you? You, it was your story where you kind of tumbled backwards into it as a job. Uh, what did you, did you have something you, that you wanted to say about the experience? Um, I would, I would kind of agree with Jonathan that it wasn't, um, you know, nothing intentional I wanted to say, just telling my story, um, you know, my job and, and my work with her. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's, um, you know, it, it obviously, it touches and affects and resonates with a lot of people. And I'm very grateful for that. And you don't see too many movies or shows of whether, you know, I think mainstream or on, on a smaller scale that really address the topic, which affects so many people. And I do think caregivers, uh, whether professional or family or just incredibly underpaid and undervalued in our society so yeah I, that's one of the things i was i was really um thinking about and i think we're going to bring anastasia um back up i know that she had um personal experience with um memory loss and memory uh issues with her own mom hello welcome back miss anastasia what did uh -huh. you want to say well the first time i saw this film i it made me cry <laughs> um, because I think that there's this recognition on the part of uh, caregivers that a lot of times we don't know whether um, we don't know what the other person is thinking about us and a lot of times they can't express it and I thought it was really beautiful um, Jonathan how you wove in the various stories of Isabel's life um, you didn't, it was, it, it didn't, we, I didn't feel manipulated in any way. I felt totally like it was believable. Like she remembers these snippets and she, when she's describing her own husband and she doesn't remember his name and she talks about the pain that that causes her. Um, and then at, at, to, to have at the very end, to have the caregiver recognize in the waves, in the weather scene, that that's why she's watching the weather. Um, and for her to have that sensitivity as a caregiver um, was just incredibly profound for me. And um, I think it's, as someone who, um, my, when my mom was, was dying, she had Alzheimer's, and I, I always hoped that the people that were around her cared as much as the caregiver in this movie. Yeah. Um, which I think really that's what hit me. Um, I also wanted to ask you guys um, something. We had a conversation about this last week, and one of the things I found so interesting about your collaboration was that, in a, in a way, it was not what you would have originally thought of as a collaborative effort because Cheryl submitted the story under another name, and Jonathan couldn't find her. And um, and in the end, Cheryl, you, you, tell us a little bit about how you know, the first time you guys actually met, or Jonathan, whichever one of you wants to tell it, because I thought it was fascinating when you explained that to us. Cheryl? Yeah. Oh, do you want to tell something first, Jonathan? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, 
yeah, it was a very interesting experience. I didn't know know him or meet him or get to see the movie uh, until it was finished, um, which was actually uh, kind of an accident. We, <laughs> um, I didn't really like intentionally use a pen name. When you um, submitted, you had to go through Gmail or Google, which just happened to, um, I didn't have my real name on. And because of that, um, he didn't, you know, I never met with him or discussed with him, you know, the story or, or the movie or anything. Did you know it was being made at the time? Were you aware that it was happening? Uh, yes. I think I got an email that um, it was chosen. Okay. But what we were talking about, too, with Anastasia before was, I think, um, I don't know about all of them, but I think some of the filmmakers, you know, met with the writers of the story and really, you know, collaborated and see what they wanted to have done. So we didn't have the opportunity to do that. And so, you know, it makes for an interesting, you know, whether that makes it better or worse or just, you know, definitely a whole different experience. And um, I just, I just thought, Jonathan did such an incredible job. And I think you can tell just looking, you know, at the lead actress who plays me, you know, the, the similarities, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, hey, with, 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 and, um, you know, just in appearance and, and her acting. Um, you know, I just really think that speaks to, you know, not only the story, but just everyone, everyone involved is just so, talented and um, the two lead actresses who played myself and Isabel both, both won um, San Diego Film Awards were very well deserved and um, yeah just without ever having met me and discussing the story just the amazing the amazing job that he did. Jonathan what did you want to say? Um, yeah it was interesting because um, when you have someone's story it's a true story uh, I had never I had never adapted anything before so it's always my own stories, that, um, my own scripts that I had written. And I, um, there was like a certain like responsibility because it's, mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's a little more sacred when it's that person's real life and their real life experiences. So I was nervous about, you know, messing that up and, and, and not being, not honoring them. But when I could, when I couldn't find her, like I, I was looking for the pen name, I I just assumed they didn't want to be found oh, at, at a certain point, and um, that just that freed me to make it my own, which was I learned imperative, and I think that's what I I needed to do. Um, we've gone on to do a, a few of these, and we won, and all that. And um, I, I would talk to, the, the next one we did after this was my, my, I was friends, I was actually friends with the person and that was associated with the story of the show I actually produced. And he said, you make it your own, you, you have complete freedom. To, and I've realized that is, for me, writing is the, is the most um, important thing. Let's go back for just a second and talk about um, someone that might be watching right now, might want to get involved, and maybe they haven't ever tried to make a film mm -hmm. or um, to write a short story um, that could become a film. How might they get involved, you know, either creative advice or practical advice? How can they get involved? With this particular competition or just filmmaking in general? Let's start with this competition. I, I know. Some people on Facebook were asking um, oh. how we can get involved. Right. Um, go to, um, I don't know the website, like go to find San Diego Film Consortium, um, go to their Facebook page, go to their website, and, and they, they're actually, um, what's the date? You have a few days, they're actually doing a quarantine film challenge, which you make a five minute short about the quarantine, however that means to you. So that's, and, and you can use your iPhone because you can't really have crews or anything right now. So that's, that's, I, that's the first thing I would say. Um, if you are interested in So Say We All, go to saysaywealonline.com and it has the monthly um, themes and submissions. Um, this month is, um, obviously it's gonna be through Zoom as opposed to live. Um, and, and the theme is Amuse Me. 
<laughs> it's about amusement parks. And um, yeah, that's how. If you want to start doing film, like just making films, mm -hmm. how I started and my advice, if you've never done it, is to do the 40 hour film festival because it's fun, it's two days, so there's less. Um, Can you explain what that is? Yeah, you, it's you, you, It's the same, you, it's a competition. It's, it's um, you get a, you pick a genre, you pick, and they tell you a, a movie, um, the movie, your movie has to involve a character, uh, a line, and a prompt. Mm. Um, so you make a movie in two days, it's super low pressure because, you know, Odds are you're not going to make a masterpiece in two days, and that's and that's where I realized that I, I, I'm good at this and I can do it. Um, so, and, thing is, is that also is that also through Film Consortium San Diego or that's it... through its own thing, which is a 20 hour film. They do okay um, work together, but it, it is its own thing. Okay. That's why yeah, I, I can I can reiterate that um, having done a few so say we all, it's a great um, it's a great jumping off point for writers. Um, you you because they are looking for stories that are work that that are unique and that are interesting to be told and they work really hard with the writers um my first so say we all um my i had a writing coach and uh, eber lampert who was fantastic and then i met with my performance coach and i actually started to cry because i was so yeah. overwhelmed and she held literally held my hand and helped me through it um, and that was Jennifer Corley, who's now um, the program director at So Say We All. So I, I think it's a it's a really it's a fantastic organization. And I'm a little biased, obviously, but um, but yeah. And there's other ones here. You know, there's Dime Stories Live. Uh, you know what we're working to do um, because th there are these organizations we don't know about each other. We're going to create a, a database. So if you're out there, if you're a um, San Diego organization, please send us your information. We want you know a centralized place where people can come and they can figure out you know oh do I want to pursue the 48 hour or you know so say we all Dime Stories Live such amazing uh, programs. But I also want to speak to um, just not giving up mm -hmm. that concept right now. I'm as a writing coach, I've been talking to a lot of people who are really struggling to stay motivated and who feel, okay, can you speak a little bit to that? Me? Yeah. yeah, no, right now, this is, I've never, I, I, I feel like my whole, all my creative energy is like walking through, um, you're trying to run through water or something. It's just, it's so hard and so laborious when normally it's, it's a uh, source of incredible joy for me. Mm -hmm. So I, I all I was going to say is I really feel that and I agree with that. Yeah. How do you, how are you coping with that? How are you inspiring yourself or keeping yourself moving? Um, I am, um, I talk to a lot of people about it and, and their advice is just be good to yourself. Be, be kind to, don't put the pressure on. It's, we're not living in normal times. And I have kind of um, just done it at my own pace. Mm. And so it's, and so I feel like if I'm doing something, I, I feel okay. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of relaxing. What about for you, Cheryl? Um, yeah, well, you just have to uh, keep persevering, you know, and never let anyone tell you you're not good enough because I, uh, I really point to the experience with Isabel as the perfect example. Um, not so much not not getting into vamp, but just the whole experience in general of, um, you know, it was like the first film con challenge and they're like, we're looking for stories. And I think I was just like, oh, okay. I submitted a couple and I was like, oh, okay. You know, whatever, like, you don't, you know what I mean? Like, you don't know what's going to happen. And, um, this particular film, you know, um, winning the challenge, uh, winning film awards. I have a, a best writer award on my mantle, getting mm -hmm. an invitation, speaking to you right now at the writer's festival. I mean, I could never have foreseen all that, you know, I'm like, Oh yeah, here's my story. 
So we kind of want to put a megaphone to that. You know, if there's anybody out there that is sitting on a story, I know so many people who have a story in their drawer, in their closet, in their head that they've never put down. Um, I really took this, you know, watching what you guys did um, from this nugget of this beautiful life experience. Um, if you're out there and you are wondering if you should do something, I feel like the answer is yes, please. Submit yeah. and just try. Yeah. And, and remember, it's, it's, it's very subjective. And also, it's the different stories are good for different mediums. And this story uh, lent itself to film. And Jonathan did such a great job adapting it. But um, just because you get a, a, a string of rejections doesn't mean you shouldn't keep going. Well, not only that, I, I do want to highlight the fact that when we did this, um, <laughs> You know, this movie won the competition, but the second place was also Cheryl's story. Oh, wow. Which was, I believe, not accepted either. So. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And uh, Jonathan or Cheryl, either one of you want to speak to what you have coming up next? Uh, right now, I, what do I have next? Uh, well, in, in this moment, I think Anastasia and Charles have seen it, but in this moment, if you want to watch, if you want to go to the kbbs.com or kbbs.org, uh, kbbs app, um, I have a documentary currently streaming about um, a, a place where people who were rejected by their families who had AIDS um, wow. die, die it was love. It's, it's wow. called Expect a Miracle. Wow. Uh, I'm really proud of it. So if you can go watch it, I would really appreciate that. Um, we can put the it. link on our website as well. That sounds really oh, okay. fascinating. Yeah. I'm very proud. Uh, but I, I, I really don't have a lot film because you can't really film right now. Yeah. Cheryl, what about for you? What's next? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. Really nothing at the moment. I've been... Um, now that uh, coronavirus has kind of changed everything, I've been a little bit, all the writing groups I go to have, have uh, transitioned to Zoom and virtually, and I've been a little bit of a dinosaur and, and reluctant to. <laughs> please come on Zoom. We would do that, please. A lot. And it's, yeah, it's been so helpful and necessary to stay in touch with one another through Zoom. So. Come on, try giving it a try. You get used to it. We, yeah. I'm in a writing group, and uh, at the beginning, there was a few people who were like, oh, I don't know. And, and now, you know, most, for the most part, everyone's embraced it. Yeah, I was kind of hoping this would be over soon, but. Yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys so much thank for you. sharing this beautiful film with us. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Isabel. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thanks.